we plan for tonight? Well, you name it, Gillis. Make it easy on yourself. Oh, don't worry about me. Peg and me are going to win tonight, aren't we, Peg? We can try. We can try, but it won't do you no good. Oh, no? Me and Honeybee's planning on winning hands down, ain't we, Honeybee? Well, quit talking about it and let's play. <laughs> Your bed, Peg. Just a minute. Go ahead, Peg. Um, one heart. One spade. Uh, three hearts. Um, what are we playing for? With the usual. You and Honeybee win, I go for the ice cream. Peg and me win, you go for the ice cream. Okay. Hey, we won last night. You didn't go for no ice cream. Oh, don't go blaming me for that. You and Honeybee argued so long over her trumping your ace that it was too late. The store was closed. What are you talking about? I didn't trump his ace. The argument started when you accused Jimsy of bidding out a turn. Well, Honeybee, I think it started when Gillis... It started when this sore head accused me of shorting him a card. What are you talking about? That was the night before last. That was last night. You don't know what you're saying. I've had enough. Oh, so have I. Come on, honeybee, let's get out of here yeah. before I get sore. Go, on. Go ahead. But don't forget, if you come back and find nobody home, believe you me, it'll be me. Figures. <laughs> uh, yes, it's William Bendix in The Life of Ryan. With Marjorie Reynolds as Peg. Tom DeAndre as Gillis, Wes Morgan as Junior, and Gloria Blondell as Honeybee. Produced by Tom McKnight. And directed by Abby Berlin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Peg, the whole trouble is we're seeing entirely too much of the Gillis. I know, Riley, but that's no reason for you Play cards with him, I ride to work with him, I work with him all day, eat lunch with him, I ride home with him, we live right under him. Peg, we're in a rut. But, but Riley, the Gillises are the only people we know since we moved down there. It's only natural that we'd be thrown together. Well, from now on, I'm throwing us at somebody else. It's probably for me. It's always for you. Now, Riley. Well, it's true, Peg. Junior must have had ten phone calls already. Party Saturday? Well, sure, Ted, I'd love to go. Who? Susan, Betty, Marge, Francis, Eddie, George, and Lillian? Yeah, I know them all. Eight o'clock? You bet. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Bye. Well, what's the matter, Pa? Junior, I can't figure you out. You haven't lived down here any longer than I have, and you know a million kids already. <laughs> well, sure, Pop. When you go to school, it's easy to make friends. Well, I'm not gonna go back to school just for that. It takes time to get acquainted when you move to a new place. Believe me, Riley, we'll have friends here just as we did in Blueview. But, Peg, we're not going to get them just sitting around the house. Well, yes, we will. First, we have to gain their confidence. Oh, no, Peg, that's out of who we... In the old days, when you wanted to make friends, you just went out and called on them. And if it worked then, it's got to work now. Riley, please. What, Peg? Well, what are you going to say? Oh, I don't know, just something simple like, uh... Let's see. I'm Chester A. Riley, and I'm working my way around the neighborhood to win your friendship. Huh? I'll see you later, Peg. Riley, I don't... Oh, no, believe think me, I Peg, I know what I'm doing. But... Oh. for walking out the way we did. Yeah, where's Ryle? I wanted to tell him I didn't mean to blow my top. Oh, that's all right. We acted just as bad. Sit down. Thanks, Peg. Riley will be back shortly. Where'd he go? He's going around the neighborhood, winning friends. got the right idea, canvas in the neighborhood. But going from door to door. Peg, how'd you get acquainted at Blueview Terrace? He went from door to door. Ah, how'd it work out? Well, it was very funny at the time. He went to this one house, and you'd never believe it. Well, if it ain't the neighborly ambassador of goodwill, how did you make out? <laughs> That's 
could happen to Blueview, too. He always loved dogs. What's it, Ryan? I don't like being stuck with you any more than you like being stuck with me. For two cents, I'd move back to Blueview Terrace. So would I. And then I'd have the kind of neighbors that I'd be... Gillis, that would be you again. Right. And I'll thank you to stop following me around. Oh, this is brutal. No matter what we think of, we end up with each other. Hey, Ryle, I got an idea how we can make friends fast. Oh, that's ridiculous. You lost your money months ago. No, will you listen to me? <laughs> no. All we gotta do is organize a chapter at the BPLA down here. Hey. Huh? Now, that's not bad. The Brooklyn Patriots of Los Angeles, Delmar Vista Bridge. Huh? How we go about it? Simple. First, we write for a charter. Yeah. Have you got paper and pencil in the house? Yeah, it's right inside. Oh, come on. Yeah, come on. Oh, this ought to be great. Huh? Sure. Pencil's right in that drawer. I'll go get some paper. Okay, Ryle, here we go. Hi, Peg. Hi, Lily B. Thanks for the book. Did you like it? Mmm, what a hero. Ah, so gallant, debonair, romantic. If they only made live ones like that. Oh, and getting back to grim reality, how are our lover boys getting along? Must be between rounds. I haven't heard much action in there. If, if they only had some outside interest. Yes. You know, I wonder, Mrs. Bennett was telling me that she and her husband belong to the Del Mar Vista Country Club. I've heard of that club, and I understand it's not too expensive to join. No. Do you think it'd be something that might appeal to the boys? Well, it should be perfect for them. They've got a swimming pool, and I've got a new bathing suit. And they have golf. And archery. Oh, what a life. We get over there early and play tennis. And then take a dip in the pool. And lunch. And after that, a couple of hours of bridge. And then another dip in the pool, and we'll still get home in time to fix dinner. Oh, it sounds wonderful. <gasps> oh, it ought to be perfect for the boys. Uh, do you think they'd go for it? You leave it to me. And as members in good standing, we therefore request permission to start a branch of the BPLA here at Del Mar Vista. Okay, so far, Ryan? That's perfect. This could be one of the biggest chapters in the lodge. Chapter closed. Honey Bee, what is the big idea? We're trying to start a chapter of our lodge down here so we can make some new friends. Forget it. You boys just broke away from the pool hall set and you're not going back to it. Now, wait a minute. What is wrong with the BPLA? Well, Honey Bee and I have a much better idea. Uh oh You boys are going to join the Del Mar Vista Country Club. Country Club? What's wrong with the Country Club? We heard that just about everyone around here belongs. Oh, brother, that's all we need. I say, old Bean. Will you up with me at daybreak tomorrow for a run with the hounds? Oh, no. No, thank you. I already had one. Remember? Oh, yes. Quick, quick. Very hilarious. Riley, would you remind me to have my lunch bucket lined with mink? Oh, yes. Quite, quite. It'll go with your Ivy League coveralls. Oh, ripping. Honey Bee, they're impossible. I'm trying to improve these bums is a lost cause. They've got as much polish as a pair of tennis shoes. Honey... Dames and their screwy ideas. Country club. Who needs that? I didn't belong to no country club in Blueview Terrace, and I was loaded with friends up there. Some friends. How many of them have been down here to see you since you moved away? Oh, yeah? Well, I don't notice none of your friends breaking down your door to come and see you. Oh, don't worry. They'll be here. Oh, they will, will they? Look, Gillis, I want to do something with you. I got five bucks right here that says that I'll get a visitor from the old neighborhood before you do. That is a chump bet. You're covered. I was loaded with friends up there. That's what gets me. I can't understand why I can't make friends down here. There's a reason for it. What kind of a crack is that? Nothing. I just say there's a reason why you can't make friends. Oh, yeah. well, what's the reason? You won't get mad if I told you? I won't get mad. You promise? I just gave you my word. Now tell me what's the reason why I can't make friends. It's because of your lousy personality. <laughs> my lousy personality? Look, Gillis, for two cents, I'd punch you right in the nose. Now, wait a minute, That's Ryle. a fine thing to say right to a guy's face. Well, I was only... The next time I ask you for your opinion, Gillis, I'll thank you to keep it to yourself. Well, you asked me why, and I told you the truth. Oh, now all of a sudden we're going to get truthful. Well, if it's the truth you want, your personality is twice as lousy as mine. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Y
couldn't even make friends down at the city, dog. Oh, oh, oh be quiet, Ted. We'll see you tonight for cards. Oh, no, you won't. I'll never play cards again with that rat. Oh, good. Let's keep it that way. And another thing, Gillis. As far as my lousy personality is concerned, I'm warning you, before I'm through, I'll have friends all over this neighborhood. Well, you what? better get going, because you just lost two upstairs. That's where you got to be going right now. That's where I'm going. Oh, go ahead. That's where I'm going. Good day. <laughs> like that guy. Right out of a clear sky tells me I got a lousy personality. All right, forget about yeah. it. Ten dollars? What's this? Oh, that's a bet I just made with that bum. A bet? Yeah. I bet him five bucks that I would have a visitor from the old neighborhood before he... Hey, look. my old pal, Otto. Well, that should make you happy. My first visitor. Oh, boy. Wait till Gillis sees this. Welcome to Delmar Vista, Otto, old pal. Hi, Ryan. Otto, you're a true friend. I knew I could count on you to... Hi, Otto. Sure glad you came. Hi, Jill. Oh, no, you don't. Fellas, I saw him first. He didn't come to see you. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, no, he didn't. I... Please, fellas, you're hurting me. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's only one way to settle this. Huh? Yeah. Otto, me and Gillis made a bet. Yeah, to see who could pull me apart? No, we made a bet to see who'd have the first visitor. So go ahead. Tell him he came down here to see me. Come on. Uh, Chester, I didn't come down to see you. Now, uh, you see that? He didn't go on. Atta boy, Otto, come on upstairs. We'll put on a feedback. Gil, I didn't come down to see you either. Sure. Oh? No, I came down to see Hawkins. Can you fellas tell me where he lives? Hawkins? Yeah. I'm being transferred to the El Segundo plant starting next week. You mean you're going to be working with us guys? Ain't that great? Hey, this calls for a celebration. Honey, be put on another plate. We got company. Oh, no, you don't. Hey, put on another plate. We got a visitor. Come on, Otto. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Oh, you don't. Please, fellas, not a jack. Now, will somebody please tell me where Hawkins lives? I don't, I don't know where Hawkins no. lives. I do. Swell, Gil, what's his address? I got it written down upstairs. Come on, I'll give it to you. Okay. And Mr. Riley, seeing that I have the first visitor, I will thank you to give me the ten dollars. Of all the two-time and double-crossing winning personalities? Come on, Otto. I thought Otto was with you. Well, he wasn't, so that vulture upstairs grabbed him off. Oh, he's with Gillis. Well, Riley, why don't you go up there and visit with him? Me go up to Gillis? Is never. Oh, Riley, the way you two carry on. One minute you and Gillis are the best of friends, and the next minute you're angry with each other. I know. Well, Riley, that's no way to act. I know. From now on, I'm staying sore at him. Oh. Rat. Yes, sir. This is the last straw. I've had all I can take of that Gillis. And that goes for Otto, too. Riley, I'm sure that... Who I'll was it used Gillis to share my lunch, lunch with Otto every time he forgot his? Me! But, dear, it's... And who was it shared Otto's lunch every time I forgot mine? Me! Riley, this has gone far enough. I think you and Gillis should make up and forget this petty bickering. Oh, no, Peg. I'm not going to make up with that cocky show-off. Well, you've got him all wrong. Uh, Gillis is an intelligent man. Intelligent? <laughs> Look, Peg, I've got just as much brains as that Gillis has got. Only difference is I don't let mine go to my head. <laughs> Riley, uh, Gillis just went around back. Why don't you go out there and make up? No, 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 no don't, Peg. Please. No, 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 you only start another beef, that's all. I well, would... not if you meet him halfway. Go. Oh. Uh, and Riley. Yeah, Peg. Take the chip off your shoulder. Well, okay, maybe it is partly my fault. Could be. Could be. Oh, it's you, huh? I was looking for Otto. He left. Oh. Otto ain't here. 
Otto? You said you were looking for Otto, didn't you? I was. He ain't here. Oh. Gillis. Yeah? I... I came out here to make up. You did? Yeah. Okay. No hard feelings. No hard feelings. <laughs> uh, what, what, what are you doing, Gil? Just trying to make a little room in here. Uh, I'll, I'll help you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, 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 what do you got in the cartons, Gillis? A lot of odds and ends, things honey bee didn't want around the house. Yeah, I, 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 I know what you mean. Peg's got a lot of junk she's been asking me to store out here, too. <laughs> well, that just about does it. Ah, that, that's pretty neat, too. <laughs> well, as, as long as I'm in the mood, I might as well get that stuff for Peg's and stack it up over here. <laughs> just a minute, wise guy. What's the matter, Gillis? Nobody is putting nothing on that shelf. What are you talking about? I'm reserving that shelf for honeybees preserves. Now, just a minute, Gillis. This happens to be my side of the garage. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Look, when we moved down here, we divided this garage up. I got the two sides, and you got the two ends. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'll put it. Now, look at here, Gillis. Look, you're the guy that insisted on these arrangements. And don't touch my shelves. Don't touch my game. <laughs> Hello, Derek. You and Gillis all made up? Uh, double crossing. I wouldn't make up with him if he was the last man on earth. And everybody in the whole world was begging me to be friends with him. I think you need some fresh air. Uh, How about driving me down to the hardware store? I want to pick up some shell paper. That's a very good idea, Peg. And while I'm down here, I'll see if they got any doormats that say unwelcome on them. In case that rat tries to pay us a visit. Go ahead. I'll ask the salesman where the shell paper is. Okay, Peg, I'll just browse around. I'll meet you later. Campaign to make new friends. <laughs> I'll get it. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Don't mention it. Thank My you. name is Chester A. Oh, oh no, no, that's okay. I'll, I'll get it. <laughs> please. please, please, you needn't bother. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Well, <laughs> All oh, right, he's just about... Oh, Mr. Tuttle, I didn't see you in all the excitement. Is this a friend of yours? Well, yes, in a way. He was merely trying to help me. Uh -huh. Well, we do have insurance to cover breakage, but... It was strictly an accident, Mr. McNeil. Uh-huh. Well, in that case, we'll forget about it. I'll have a couple of my clerks clean up the mess. Pardon me. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Tuttle. Elwood Tuttle. Oh. Uh, my name is Chester A. Radish. Elwood, I've been waiting at the entrance for... Well, what in heaven's name? Well, it was caused by this gentleman here in an attempt to show me a little courtesy. Uh, Mr. Riley, my wife, Mrs. Tuttle. Hello. Uh, how do you do? Uh, this is my wife, Peg. Peg, this is Mr. and Mrs. Tuttle. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Riley, you don't know how that little courtesy you extended impressed me. Well, I was only trying to be friendly. And that is something we could work at more in this day and age. You know, the way we rush around, we completely forget about the other fellow. I don't believe I've seen you folks. Are you new in the neighborhood? Well, well, we haven't been here too long. We moved in from Blueview Terrace. Do you like it here? Oh, very much so, but we are having a little problem getting acquainted. I know what you mean. We had the same trouble when we first moved here. How about coming over to our place Friday night? We're having some other people over that we met in Michigan last summer. Yes, how, how about making it for dinner? We don't want to impose. We accept. Riley, <laughs> that's what I like about him. He's so honest and straightforward. <laughs> We're at Sycamore and Fourth, the big white house on the northwest corner. Course, and we'll see you about seven. Oh, fine. Seven. Oh, it's yeah. so good to meet yeah, you. Yeah, nice you. meeting you. Goodbye. 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 Well, that's one way of getting acquainted, huh? Yes, the hard way. <laughs> oh, 
Mr. Tuttle forgot his baggage. Mr. Tuttle! Oh. Don't bother with it. It's all right. It's all right. That's all right. Don't have that. See, you, you forgot your package, and I was... Just gonna... I think the floor is slammed. Oh, 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 oh. Are you all ready, Riley? Yeah, I'm all ready, Peg. To go visit our new friends. I'd like to stop on the way and pick up some flowers. Flowers for our new friends? Okay, Peg. Riley, I'm not deaf. No, that was for the benefit of Gillis upstairs. Him telling me I can't make new friends. I'll show that bum. Would you fast these pearls for me? Yeah. Tuttle seem like extra nice people. I'm sure their friends are, too. So let's try to make a good impression on them. Look. Peg, if you're hinting that you want me to go around putting on a dog, that's not for me. Oh, I didn't mean that at all, dear. No, well, I'm not the type that goes around saying, my, how charming, especially when it ain't charming. Yes. Uh, well, like today, when I was waiting for you outside the beauty parlor, a woman comes out with one of them new frizzled haircuts, and she says to the other woman, she says, how do you like my hairdo? And the other woman says, I think it's charming. Ah, she said it with a straight face. Uh, yes, dear. You should have seen that haircut, Peg. She looked like a scared coconut. Besides, she had a face like a bucket of worms. Oh, that stuff ain't for me. I'm the kind of a guy that lays it right on the line. Well, I'm sorry I mentioned it. And if some people think I got a lousy personality, that's their tough luck. They're stuck with it. Yes, dear. And another thing, Peg. Yes, dear. Junior! Yup, up. Have you finished washing the car so we can drive over and visit our new friends? We wouldn't want to drive up in front of our new friend's house in a dirty car! Hey, look. Honey Bee and Gillis are watching us. Look at him, look, Peg. Boy, is that Gillis envious. Never mind. I haven't seen that guy's face so green since the last time we went deep sea fishing. <laughs> we'll just be a couple blocks away, Junior. I imagine we'll be home around 11. Yeah. Okay, Mom. Junior, you did a fine job. Thanks, Bob. We'll make a good impression when we drive up to our new friend's house. Daddy, you get in the car. <laughs> You need any help, dear? No, I think this about does it. <clears throat> well, our guests are right on time. Good evening. Hello, Mr. Tuttle. Hello, Mr. Tuttle. Uh, Mr. Tuttle. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, so me. Yeah. How thoughtful. Oh, now, make yourself at home. Sit down, won't you? Thank you, Mr. Yes. Tuttle. May oh. I take your stove? Oh, thank you. Right, right over here, Peg. So glad you could make it this evening. Well, you don't know how glad we are that you invited us. Oh, Edna, and I know what it is to be strangers in a new community. Mm. Especially when you got a lousy personality. <laughs> I don't talk about me. Oh, this will be the little couple we met last summer in Michigan. We had cottages right next to each other on the lake. Oh, I'll go, dear. No, oh, I'm sure you'll like them both very oh, much. I know you will. Oh, here we are. I want you to meet Miss Gillis. Ryle. Honeybee. Peg. But then you know each other. Do we know each other? <laughs> but we didn't expect to see each other. Delightful people, the Rileys. Charming people, the Gillises. Well, I'm so happy the way this worked out. And now that you four are renewing your friendship, uh, you'll probably be getting together real often. Well, follow me, folks. Dinner's all ready. <clears throat> oh. Smile. Smile. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Edna, I often wish that we'd learn to play cards. Oh, it doesn't really bother me, Elwood. Just seeing other people enjoy themselves is pleasure enough for me. I bid two hearts. Two spades. Three hearts. I'll just make it five no trump. Riley! Five no trump! That's right. 
Aren't they two lovely couples? And they get along so beautifully, too. Mm. Okay, wise guy, double. Redouble. <laughs> 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 <laughs>